Okay, so we're going to cover a very important question for your LINAC understanding for radiation beams and then the part three exam. So say you see a device that looks like this to the right. What is this and how does it work? What directions do the electric and magnetic fields go? If this went out, what QA is necessary? And if you had to make new baselines, what tolerances would you use? So we have a magnetron here and it supplies microwaves for low energy Linux, typically 12 MV or less. And it's less costly, but it is also less stable than a klystron. So uh, those are the kind of the advantages, disadvantages. You have to have a magnetron or you have to have a klystron. Electric machines typically have magnetrons and varying machines have klystrons. So what directions do the electric and magnetic fields go? So a static magnetic field is applied perpendicularly. So kind of into the screen here. A pulsed electric field is applied directed radially, radially inward all around between the central cathode and anode, aka these, these 12 cavities here. The electrons emitted by the cathode are accelerated by pulsed electric fields toward the anode and re the resonant cavities. So note that the, the cathode is this part here in the middle, and then we've got the uh, copper anode out here. So these little cavities, these are called the resonant cavities. And that is when we're talking about the electrons being emitted by the cathode, by the centerpiece going toward the anode and being accelerated by that electric field. So they go toward the resonant cavities. Now, the magnetic field imparts a circular arc to these electrons, causing a circular motion, moving them in what a lot of books consider, they call them complex spirals. So as these electrons are boiled off, moving toward the anode, going toward the resonant cavities, that complex spirals 60% of that kinetic energy of the electron beam is converted to microwave energy. So the directions of the magnetic and electric field, the magnetic field is in and out, like I said, kind of looking at the screen. And then the electric field is from the anode, from the copper to the cathode, because you have to remember the current is opposite the electron flow. So since the electrons flow from in to out, the current is opposite. So the electric field is from the anode to the cathode. So now if this went out, what QA is necessary? So you would want to do first outputs. So that is absolutely critical. You would also want to check your percent depth doses and then you'd also want to check all of your beam profiles. Now, if you had to make new baselines, what would what references and tolerances would you use? So first thing, I would want to use TG142 as a reference, and I would want to use the annual tolerances. So remember, what we are trying to do ultimately is make our machine replicate what we have in our treatment planning system. So the tolerances you want are the tightest tolerances you can get because you are having to redo all of your outputs and percent depth doses and profiles. You are trying to replicate the original Linux output and profiles because those are what is in the treatment planning system. So using the annual tolerances, which are the most strict, is the way to go. So as I mentioned, that is going to meet the TPS data, and that is going to help us get accurate dose delivery. So the a couple other small random details kind of about this is that we have two uh, megawatt peak output power. The electrons from the cathode cause additional charges on the anode poles, making the electric field between 
uh, the adjacent segments of the anode. So magnetrons are very important to understand. Thankfully, they are a little more simple than klystrons are, in my opinion. So if you kind of remember what I've mentioned here, I think you're going to set yourself up pretty well for the exam. If you have any questions, please comment below. And thank you for watching.